I think we can all agree that Taken weapons as a concept are absolutely badass. Ask just about any Destiny player and they'll tell you that they love the idea of them, yet Bungie has been quite hesitant to put many of them in our hands over the years. In Destiny 1, we had the Dreadfang Sword as well as the Stolen Will Shotgun, with Destiny 2 only giving us the Whisper of the Worm, until now. In Season of the Deep, Bungie has given us an entire Taken weapon set, but is it any good? Well, we'll be answering that question in today's video as I review each and every one of these weapons, discussing how you can farm them yourselves, and also talk about the best perks for each individual weapon. This video, just like all of my videos, is from a PvE player's perspective, and if that does interest you, feel free to subscribe for future PvE guides like this one, and without further ado, let's jump into it. So firstly, let's talk about how to farm these out, because without being able to get your hands on them, what is even the point of the video? The Taken weapons are the main seasonal weapon set of Season of the Deep, and they're actually just Taken reskins of the old Reckoning weapons, but they do have different perks, stats, frames, etc., so don't worry about them just being carbon copies, they actually are quite different. Now, you'll mainly get these weapons via running the seasonal content, whether that be the six player salvage missions or three player deep dives, and the end chest will always have a chance to drop you one. Having keys for these activities would definitely help your chances though, as it will give you extra loot, and these can be gotten through playing and completing any content in the game. But if you are looking for the current fastest way to farm them, the method that I've been doing is farming the Cali boss in Last Wish, as I think that's the way to go, but it will require a full team. You can have one person in the encounter stand on the first plate that you drop down to when you go into the room, while another player shoots Kali once with anarchy whenever her shields drop. She'll then teleport over to the plate that the person was standing on and basically the whole team is going to be gathering around, and the whole team can just bake her whenever she teleports with supers, rockets, and slugs, while the anarchy player continues to deal damage and occasionally shoot her to keep her anchored down. And I also recommend a tractor cannon player here as well for the debuff. Now once her health is depleted, she'll end up dying once the final anarchy shot runs out of duration, and then you can just instantly queue back up into the checkpoint while waiting on this to happen, and then run the encounter again. This gives not only Last Wish loot for crafting those weapons, but also a ton of keys for salvage and deep dives, and even seasonal engrams too that you can focus back at the helm. That said, I know that not everybody will be able to do this method that I just discussed, as you will need a full team, but it's by far the quickest and most effective way to stock up on a ton of loot this season, and I highly recommend trying to find groups via Bungie's LFG or D2 LFG Discord. It's really just that good, and I really think everyone should be doing it. Now that you know the fastest farm, let's finally get into the weapons. Targeted Redaction. This hand cannon is modeled after the spare rations, but comes in the flavor of Void as an aggressive frame. And those two words right there, aggressive frame, kind of killed any sort of hype that I had for this weapon after I got my hands on it. We're currently in a PvE meta that doesn't really promote the usage of legendary hand cannons quite as much as it used to despite the recent buff, and with this being a 120, it definitely gets bogged down compared to its peers. As with all 120s, the base stats for things like stability, handling, and reload are, for lack of a better term, dog shit, and it makes using this weapon feel like such a drag at times. Thankfully, the Taken weapons are craftable, so you can do your best to fix those issues via the Enclave, but there are plenty of other hand cannons where you wouldn't have to do that in the first place. Now, taking a look at the perks, we do have some fine options here. In the first column, we have Triple Tap, Outlaw, and Envious Assassin, with the second column bringing Destabilizing Rounds, Explosive Payload, Frenzy, and the new perk, Collective Action, and this is going to grant you a 20% damage buff for 6 seconds upon collecting an Elemental Pickup. And elemental pickups are things like void breaches, fire sprites, stasis shards, that kind of stuff. Now the perks overall aren't that bad, but this weapon being a 120 really brings it down for me, and I wouldn't personally recommend crafting it. It does need to be said though that there aren't that many void hand cannons in the game, uh, but this one still is just not really that good, and now that match game isn't much of a modifier anymore, I just can't really recommend crafting it based off of the element alone. However, I can recommend crafting it for the Taken style points because it just looks that cool. Rapacious Appetite. 
This SMG here is modeled after the Bug Out Bag Reckoning SMG and comes to us as a stasis aggressive frame. Now out of all the weapons in this set, this is probably a top two for me, and although the weapon is far from perfect, I'd still say that it's definitely more worth your time than the stasis aggressive frame that we got back in Plunder. I decided to give this weapon a spin using my old Horfrost Titan build from a few seasons back, now that we have the new elemental charge mod added with season 21, and I honestly had a blast using this thing. It comes with some really good perks as well, with Envious, Perpetual, and Fourth Times being in the first column, and One For All, Headstone, Target Lock, and Frenzy in the second. Feels really good once you get those stasis surges going, and combining that with the damage perk, it'll feel great. That said, I won't lie to you and tell you that this SMG is something absolutely extraordinary and that you must craft it immediately, but it's pretty damn good and worth a craft if you got time and mats to spare if you enjoy stasis. A Distant Pull this right here is my favorite weapon of the set, and it comes to us as a rapid fire stasis version of the Soul Survivor Sniper Rifle. Again, going back to what I said about the Rapacious Appetite SMG, this weapon is going to greatly benefit from the Elemental Charge mod when rocking stasis builds, because you're going to be able to boost that damage right on up, and as you can see in the background gameplay, it's super easy for me to get stasis shards, converting them into a stasis surge buff, and then outputting good damage on high health bar enemies. And speaking of good damage, when taking a look at the perks, we have plenty of options to make that an easy reality. The first column features both overflow as well as triple tap, with those perks being able to be paired with collective action, which is just phenomenal with elemental charge, as well as focus fury. If you're going for a specific build on stasis while using this thing, collective action is a no brainer because it's just a constant 20% damage buff that you will always have without needing to ramp it up. Otherwise, if you're going for more general gameplay, Focus Fury will do just fine. Different Times. This pulse rifle is the taken version of the Outlast and comes with the same archetype but different element and perks, so let's talk about it. Different Times is a pulse rifle that's going to fit nicely into the builds of those that find themselves running Strand. If you're wanting a different type of weapon to boost up with surge mods or summon more hatchlings, then this pulse can definitely do that. Outside of using this inside of strand builds for more variety, however, the pulse isn't anything groundbreaking. It's exactly what you'd come to expect from a rapid fire pulse with nothing that's going to absolutely wow you, but nothing that'll disappoint you either. Taking a look at the perks in the first column, we have subsistence, stats for all, and outlaw, with the second column featuring adrenaline junkie, collective action, golden tricorn, and hatchling. Again, nothing too crazy here, but similarly to the stasis SMG from earlier, if you want to slap it in a build and you have the extra time in mats, go ahead and go for it. Thin Precipice. This sword is the Vortex Strand equivalent of the Just In Case sword from Reckoning, but how exactly good is it? Well, I can just be honest and say that personally, I never see myself using this thing whatsoever in the future. Uh, for me, as far as swords go, I'm essentially at all times glued to my Eager Edge sword or Lament, and that's about it with very little variety in between. Thin Precipice has some perk rolls that you may find interesting, however, and there's definitely some unique combos here, but nothing crazy enough for me personally to go out of my way and craft it. In the first column, we have rolls like Valiant Charge for the lunge distance after blocking damage, as well as Relentless Strikes and Unrelenting, with the second column having Adrenaline Junkie, Golden Tricorn, Collective Action, Chain Reaction, and Hatchling. As you can see, definitely some cool perks here, some of which I don't think I've seen on a sword before, but for a player like myself, I don't really see myself giving this sword the time of day. Until its return. The final weapon in today's video is the Strand Rapid Fire Shotgun counterpart to the Last Man Standing. Is it any good? Eh, we kind of yet again find ourselves with a weapon that just isn't all that exciting, which has been a common theme of the entire weapon set, which is extremely disappointing. Until its return comes with the following perks. In the first column, we have Overflow, Autoloading, and Threat Detector, with the second column having Collective Action, Trench Barrel, Cascade Point, Surrounded, and Vorpal. I'd say the most interesting thing here is probably Surrounded, as when enhanced, you can get a sizable damage buff out of this shotgun, but that does require a very specific scenario to pull off, as you do need multiple enemies around you. I did have fun running around with an overflow cascade point roll and slapping enemies around with a lightning fast RPM, but the second I tried it in higher tier content, it just didn't stand up against the enemies quite as well, and I kinda wish the weapon at the very least had 1-2 punch, as it would be a pretty sexy shotgun to look at while I run an Arc Hunter punching build with it, but unfortunately even 1-2 punch is nowhere to be found here. For me personally, this is the most disappointing weapon of the entire set, but what do you guys think? 
Finally, before ending things off, I do want to show off the origin trait a bit since we haven't discussed it yet. The origin trait on all these weapons is the unsated hunger, and it increases your handling, reload speed, and stability when not a single ability is fully charged. So in the background gameplay, you can see just exactly how much this will affect your reload speed specifically, and it's a pretty damn good buff, but constant ability uptime is something that most builds strive for in Destiny 2, so I'm not too impressed by the usability of this origin trait, since my goal is to avoid running out of ability energy in the first place. And with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this video today. In all honesty, the Taken weapon set is incredibly disappointing, and that makes me super sad to see. All these weapons look incredible, and the only weapon I see myself using somewhat consistently in the future is the sniper rifle and maybe the SMG. But as always, let me know what you all think down in the comments below. And I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching today's video, as well as to shout out my Patreon and YouTube supporters that help keep the channel up and running. In tier 2 and up for Patreon, we have Admus, Boomer Noob, Serenity, Austin, Cinco, and Galumia. And for my tier 2 YouTube members, we have BWC, Alex Miser, Hank the Tank, Bluesman, Aldo Martin, Kira Gira, Imposter, Repulsa Potato, Brandon Fisher, Ram, Irvin Hornby, Mad Ghost, Salty, Nimble Fox, Mamimi, Clear, Angel, Ben McClellan, Mayhem Gaming, Alex, and Serenity once more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.